Hey there, YouTubes. It's Roger Quinn uh, here for another uh, tremendously exciting video uh, concerning SketchUp. Bless it. And um, this video is going to hopefully show you a neat little tip for how to more easily create uh, cavities for doors and windows and things like that um, in a wall structure, particularly when you want to have a somewhat accurate wall structure like this sort of thing where you've got an external and an internal wall, which of course is pretty common on most buildings. Um, and yet the, we'll call it say the standard way of trying to um, use the push-pull method of uh, drawing a door or a window and knocking a hole through can be troublesome. And I'll show you what I mean. So the standard way, I suppose, that we would think about doing something like that is uh, I've got this grouped at the moment, so I'll just double click that and draw onto this face. And I won't be terribly accurate with what I'm doing right now. I'll just draw a quick door thing. There we go. And uh, then, as I said, the, the fairly standard way of uh, trying to knock a hole would be to draw the rectangular space on the surface that you're trying to knock a hole into, grab the push-pull tool and start to push them to try and knock holes. Push-pull goes either way, obviously. And uh, it, that's great up until the first... Uh, through that first part of the wall, but as soon as it encounters that cavity and it meets that second wall, we get a problem. Uh, and that's because uh, the geometry is not really connected as such. So the push-pull doesn't really work. It, it will only go as far as going through that fr front wall. And then you have all sorts of fun trying to work out ways to create that cavity all the way through uh, in a relatively straightforward and easy way of working. There is no easy way of doing that. Um, it involves a lot of annoyance, actually. Um, you'd have to sit there with all guides and copy the door sort of geometry on the other side and push it through and cross your fingers and hope for the best. However, um, there is a reasonably easy way of doing that uh, that uh, uses the well, it's called the solid tools, and that's a, it's a feature of uh, SketchUp. It's not a plugin; it's a standard feature um, of of SketchUp, and it works beautifully. Uh, the only thing that it requires is that you create your initial uh, walls in a, in a particular sort of sequence, which I'll show you. But just to explain what I'm talking about, um, there's a rectangle shape. But again, I'll do the same thing again. I'll just draw a a door shape. So. I'll try and make it similar to what most people would end up doing. There's a door. And this time, instead of push-pulling to knock a hole through, I'm actually going to pull it out this way. Uh, and all I really need to do here is just make sure that I'm making that um, uh, sort of 3D little shape there thicker than what my wall structure needs to be. Okay, so I've clearly gone thicker than it needs to be because in the moment I'm going to push that through the wall. But first, I'm going to group that together. So I triple clicked it and I've grouped. It's also important to point out that my wall structure is grouped. Okay, so this, that is actually important. But what's super important is the way I've drawn these walls, which I'll show in a minute. But um, how you get this to work is as simple as doing this. You then grab the, the box that's going to represent the cavity space. And I'll just adjust my view so I can get this thing to push through in the right. Uh, direction. There we go. Just get that to constrain through there a little bit. Come on, keep going. Oh, SketchUp, you can be annoying sometimes. There we go. And I'll just check that that has punched all the way through. Okay, so just basically position that through the walls and then I'm just going to shift click to select the wall structure and the uh, the cavity thing I just made. And then this is the magic bit. If you then right click and you choose solid tools, subtract, there's the hole. Just like that. And uh, the, the beauty of that method too is that uh, you can repeat that as many times as you need to do that. So if you do have like a number of doors and things around your structure or windows that are a um, standard uh, 
size or, or shape, uh, it means you really only have to draw those things once. So, and then just copy them and knock holes in. So let's say this was going to be a window, um, and I want to repeat that particular size window a couple of times down there. Um, I can do that pretty easily. I'll just uh, make that a group. And just before I start knocking holes, I'll make a copy of this one. So I'm just using the um, option on a Mac anyway, or Alt on a PC. Uh, drag to make a copy. And then I can start knocking holes. So drag that through. Just make sure it's definitely going all the way through, which it is. Shift click to get the walls and that. Right click, solid tools, subtract. And then I've got another one to do down here. And again, I'll just position that where I need it. That's pretty good. I was just keeping an eye there that it was moving on the right plane, which it was. Shift click, right click, solid tools, subtract. And there's my windows, and of course that means I could, you know, create a, um, a window frame or whatever and make that a standard size thing and just keep duplicating and putting it where I need it. So as you probably agree, that, that's actually a, a very quick way of working with um, a somewhat complex wall structure, but it's a very accurate wall structure uh, because it's got our external inter internal walls, and a very quick way of knocking holes. So let's have a look at how that's done, what you need to do to set that up so that your geometry will actually work. Uh, and basically how to make it uh, what SketchUp defines as being a so-called solid object. And so let's just make a, I'll try and make this exactly the same size as what I made the other two demos. I think I had a four by six meter room. Okay, and it's at this point right now where we need to make one little change to the typical way that you go about making a wall structure. Typically what you do is draw your plane and then start drawing your wall structures on that, whether you're using offset or whatever you're doing. To do that, you'd start drawing like I'm doing here. I'll just do this quite quickly. And off we go. So there's my cavity. And here's my internal wall. So I'm just using offset to make this. And then you could use push-pull to start to move that up. To make your walls and it partly is quite correct but again you can see that it's it's giving us a clue that it's going to not see that as a solid geometry because it's showing us that we've got the gray faces in there and the white faces here so to stop it from doing that here's the tip just before you start drawing your walls on the slab basically that you've drawn make it a slab so what that means is just put a very slight extrusion on that. And if in doubt, you can just use something like five uh, or 50 mil or 100 mil, uh, because that way you can very easily calculate that out later if you do need to put dimensions and things uh, that you, you may need to sort of take this measurement off later. Um, but also it can be quite handy if you, you do indeed know a particular uh, uh, floor, like a slab height or something that's gonna be on, on your um, plans. So you can actually put that in. But whatever it is, just make sure that you put that very slight thickness on it, okay? The exact height doesn't matter, but I was just saying if you use a, um, an easy to remember measurement, you can then compensate for that later if you need to. Okay, and then you can start doing the fairly standard method of drawing the walls on that top surface. So again, I'm just gonna use this offset technique for offsetting there, so, uh, oops, I might as well get this really correct. I'm gonna use 110 millimeter for the external wall, so we'll assume like a single brick wall or something. Uh, 40 mil for the cavity, and then I'm gonna use 90 to represent my internal wall. Okay, and now we can just go through with the standard process of extruding the walls. Um, I'm going to take that up to be 2400 mil. And it's not going to infer to that one, so I'll type that in. 
Okay, 400 mil. There it is. And you'll notice that it is all white geometry. So it's already telling us that um, it's very likely going to work because it's not seeing uh, faces defined as a different uh, color. Okay, which as I said is, is SketchUp's default way of saying it's sort of seeing slightly different geometry. Uh, it's, it's reversing the faces basically, um, whereas this has them all working in the same uh, orientation basically. And because we put that slight thickness on the wall, it now will see this as what it defines as a solid object. And so that's why I'll be able to do the, um, the hole in the wall pretty easily. Now the only thing you've just got to remember to do to get solid tools to work, to um, just make it a bit easier to um, work with, is just group that. Okay, so group your, your main wall structure together, like that. And then, as I said, you can just create whatever you know uh, shape you need to punch the hole through. So uh, again, I should draw this really accurately. So we get a height of about, oh, who cares, you get the idea, there's a hole, so a hole square, and remember you just have to extrude out to get a thickness to that, triple click that and group it. Uh, it could be wise at this point to make some copies of that if you know that you're going to, you know, create some more door cavities around the, the project you're working on. And I'll just go back to, I've made one copy there, uh, because basically when you do the solid tools subtract, it will remove this original thing, so it's helpful to have some spares. And then, yeah, the final step is, once that's grouped, just push it through the geometry. And I'm just going to constrain that so it moves in the right plane. Okay, just got to push that through a little bit further. Like so. There we go. Uh, incidentally, I probably should uh, also confirm that I've got a little guide there that um, when I drew that initial square, I've got a guide that's up by 50 mil, just so it's gonna give me that little, um, I guess, slab height difference there. So I'm not drawing my cavity right on the floor level. Although theoretically, I think that still works, but I just wanted to allow for a little bit of floor space. Okay. Then once again, you just click the thing that's gonna be the cavity, shift click to select the walls, the thing that you're gonna knock the hole in, and then either right click, or if you go up to tools and go to solid tools, subtract. And there we are. Uh, so yeah, that's solid tools. Um, you probably find that there would be uses for some of those other things. They're worth uh, experimenting with the union and strap. Obviously, they kind of do what they describe in the name. Uh, union will obviously join, whereas subtract punches the hole. Uh, certainly worth having a play with. But um, yes, the main tip with that was that that uh, ability to create create geometry that the program recognizes as solid geometry. So when you're working with one of these somewhat standard methods for creating uh, uh, walls and things based on a, a flat uh, plan sort of uh, view of something. If you just remember that tip of creating a little bit of an extrude first, then draw your walls and pull them up, that method should work. Okay, hope that's helpful uh, and enjoy your sketch upping. Okay, bye now.